All right, man. Peace. So, brothers, for those of you who follow professional boxing, at least the history of professional boxing, you'll know that the legendary heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali, he had a comedic sidekick by the name of Drew Bundini Brown. And Drew Bundini Brown was the person who invented the slogan, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and many other of Muhammad Ali's famous sayings and slogans. But he did not get his start as comedic relief with Muhammad Ali. He actually got his start with a fighter who's even graded to be on a higher level than Ali, that being Mr. Sugar Ray Robinson. Drew Bundini Brown, he started off in Sugar Ray Robinson's entourage, and he would entertain Sugar Ray Robinson. Now, as Ray Robinson's career started to decline and Muhammad Ali's career started to elevate, you know, at that point he was still named Cassius Clay, and Cassius Clay was a huge fan of Sugar Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson told Cassius Clay, he said, look, I have this guy in my entourage that I think would be good for you. He's great for comedic relief. And he's also great for encouragement. His name is Drew Brown. So Ali said, no problem. He met up with Drew Bundini Brown. They started joking around with one another. And, you know, soon they were as thick as thieves. Why do I bring up this story? Because Mr. J.R. Smith, for those of you who still follow the Cleveland Cavaliers, is currently on the outs with their franchise, and it's not a surprise. Because J.R. Smith has stayed in the NBA so long because he basically started out as the comedic relief for Carmelo Anthony, and he eventually became the comedic relief for LeBron James. And now that LeBron James is gone, what use does J.R. Smith have for any franchise across the NBA? Not much. So it's not going to last long, and this has caused Mr. Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman to ask each other the question of will J.R. Smith ever be able to rise above or transcend that situation that occurred in game one of the 2018 NBA Finals? Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. According to sources, J.R. Smith and the Cavs have mutually agreed to part ways. Smith, who may be remembered for dribbling out the clock in a game during the NBA Finals. So, fellas, I'll ask you this. Stephen A., do you think he'll ever recover from that moment when he cost Cleveland the game? No. Well, Stephen A. Smith states no, but <laughs> I think that J.R. Smith should have no problem getting over that situation because he was never viewed as being an intelligent player in the first place. It's one thing if J.R. Smith was a player who, say, he had had a 12-year career and made 10 All-Star games, and the only thing that he was missing was a championship, and you know this was going to be something that was going to mark, be a black stain on his career, like said, Chris Webber calling timeout in the championship game against North Carolina in 93. But J.R. Smith has been known to be an idiot for his entire career. This is just another example. That's why I call him just retarded Smith. It's not that big a deal. There's about 10 situations that have happened in J.R. Smith's career that were even worse than this. I, I can't even call it a brain fart because you got to have a brain to fart, <laughs> to fart in it. You know? So I can't even. It's just J.R. doing J.R. shit. Well, not, and I don't say that with any joy. I actually like Jr. Oh. No, you don't, Stephen A. Smith. Stop lying. You guys had that big blow up last year when Jr. Smith was upset about no longer being a starter. D. Wade was going to take his starting minutes, and then he sat on the sideline and sulked in his hoodie. And you claimed that he shouldn't wear the hoodie on the sideline because it would remind white people of Trayvon Martin. Some ridiculous shit you were talking. Uh, but I think that. <laughs> Look at LeBron. <laughs> LeBron like I'm gonna call up Rich Paul after this game nigga Your contract about to get cancelled F you You will always It's the combination It's not and, and, this, and listen to this Max It's not just the mistake that he made It's the visible reaction from LeBron That you will always hold on to Does anybody realize No it's not I mean, they try to act like this is Scott Norwood missing the field goal against the Giants in 91. Like, this is not that big a deal. Nobody thought that Cleveland was going to win a game, much less the series. Realize and take a moment to really recognize the fact that until LeBron James wins a championship again, that will be the defining moment until LeBron wins a championship again. No, it will not. LeBron James is 3-6 and six in the finals. Everybody is used to him losing in the finals. It's not a huge deal. It's not like he's Tim Duncan or somebody like that who, when he did lose in the finals, it was like a, a big story because normally Tim does not lose in the finals. LeBron is 
three and six in the finals, they were going to lose anyway. Every time we talk about LeBron, 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 and we don't mention a recent championship, we're going to point to the last shot he had. And the last shot he had was that visual right there. No, sir. The last real shot that LeBron James had to win a championship was in 2016, and he won. And that was when all those dominoes fell at the same time for him, and he was able to make it pay off, he and Kyrie Irving. I mean, this here, this is just nonsense. This is just J.R.'s buffoonery. That expression for J.R.'s faux pas, and I think that you can't... <laughs> oh, man. Yo, LeBron be killing me with them, with them theatrical faces. I can't believe this shit. Can't escape that. So it's one of those situations. Let me also say this though. JR's not like he's lying. I mean, probably, he probably said it because he wanted to be gone. Yeah. All right. And, and, the, and the Cavaliers have obliged. I don't give a damn what the Cavaliers say. They ain't trying to win no games. You don't want to use tank. You don't want to say tank it fine. Don't say tank it. Say something up. Of course they're not trying to win games. Why would they? They're trying to get the number one overall draft pick. Something else. They ain't trying to win basketball games. Mm -hmm. Not with the roster that they put out there, okay? And, and let me tell you what the bad part about that, Max, and I'm going to be the first one to say it. The worst possible place that Zion Williamson out of Duke can end up in is Cleveland. And that's where he's heading. It's <laughs> had, and, 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 that's, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get him. But why that can't, is it the, the worst the, place? Let me tell you why it's the worst. Follow because the, because he, we already look at him as a physical freak of nature. We already have quotes from the great Steve Kerr talking about, I thought LeBron was once in a lifetime, but evidently he's not. There's another on the way. So the fact that it... Yeah, but you know what, Steve? If Zion Williamson is as great as you want him to be and as many other so-called basketball experts want him to be, it's not going to matter where he goes. It's really not. Because basketball is a game where you put the ball into your best player's hands and you tell them to go to work. Bottom line. If, if, if it's not like it's Kyrie. They can get anybody. They can get, they can get Jay, you know, they can get that kid Barrett. They can get somebody <coughs> else. But if Zion Williamson ends up in Cleveland because of who he is physically, the athleticism, the size, the physicality, the dominance, if he ends up in Cleveland, he is going to arrive with expectations. It's not higher. Well, I have news for you, Steve. Life is about expectations. Either you can live up to them or you can't. If you can't, you move on. You try to train yourself up so that you can do better. If you can, then there's going to be even elevated expectations. Michael Jordan came into the NBA in 80-45. He won a rookie of the year. After that, the expectations were what? You have to be better. You have to get the MVPs. You have to win the championships. So on and so forth. That's what life is about. I agree. And that'll be, that'll be I, a bad I, I situation agree with for that. that. I agree with Total that. Total bad situation. Bobby Mercer, the outfielder for the Yankees, was a five-time All-Star and considered a major disappointment because he was supposed to be the next Mickey Mantle. Right. right, but that only becomes a problem if you as a person feed into that. All you can do is be you. That's it. All you can do is be you. As I've stated in the past, Muhammad Ali, he had one of the most illustrious championship title runs of any heavyweight. After he left... Larry Holmes came onto the scene. And there are many people who think that Larry Holmes was just as good as Ali, but he did not have the charisma, he didn't have the swag. So very few people remember Larry Holmes like how they remember Muhammad Ali. But in Larry Holmes' mind, if he knows who he is as a person, that's all that matters. Right. I mean, it's ridiculous, but Zion Williamson's an yeah. amazing player. Look, yes. I want to say this about J.R. Smith. I totally disagree with you about this mm -hmm. and about most people's perception of J.R. Smith. Mm -hmm. The last time LeBron had a chance to win a championship was not last year. He had zero chance to win. Thank you, sir. You're on point, Max Kellerman. To win a championship last year, 73-win team added Kevin Durant. They were going to crush everybody. The Rockets had the best chance to win. Mm. They blew it. The, the Cavs had no chance, zero chance. To beat the Warriors last year, it's not like... Let, let, let's look at a similar situation where a guy made a mental error in a big moment. Um, and he's still known for it. Chris Webber. Chris Webber did it in college. But he did it on a team that was expected to win. They had the best team. Chris Webber also had a great career after that, so that's not the only thing he's remembered for. J.R. Smith is... Well, let's be for real, Max Kellerman. The main thing that Chris Webber is remembered for is that timeout. And I remember watching that game. You know, and in the annals of time, that Fab Five team has taken on an air of mystique because of what they represented off the court as much as what they represented on the court. They represented that early 90s hip-hop era. 
with the long baggy shorts and the black socks, etc. But people forget they never won shit. Because there's no disrespect, that energy normally leads to chaos. And chaos is not fruitful in sports. You need order in sports to be fruitful, to be successful. And that's why that team never won anything. Because they were more concerned with their swag than they were with their productivity on the basketball floor. It's 33 years old now. The reason that's the thing that's fresh in your mind is because it did happen in the finals. He is always known as a bit of a head case. But the problem with JR now is people forget already. Think about a three point shooter and a defensive guy. JR Smith came in the league jumping out the gym. He was a highlight dunk guy, one of the best in the league at making those highlights. And we love the. Yes, he was. But what kept him in the NBA for so long was not just his physical ability, but his friendship with Carmelo Anthony. And then later on, his alignment with LeBron James. He wanted to be the sidekick for LeBron, and LeBron allowed him to be. But what truly hurt JR was when the Cleveland Cavaliers signed Dwayne Wade, and he was able to finally understand that he was never LeBron's friend. He was just a sidekick, like an errand boy. Okay, I'm going to let you hang out with me because you're so desperate to be around me, but you're not really a friend because you're not a peer. That's how LeBron James thinks. When you see him at these functions with his quote-unquote teammates and they're laughing and smiling, that shit is phony. That's like, you know, people taking eighth grade graduation pictures. Two minutes after the ceremony is over, you got to move on to high school mindset. And that's how it is with LeBron James. And a lot of these guys, they think that it's a real friendship and they end up getting their feelings hurt. That's why you see so many of his former teammates like Booby Gibson and Mo, Mo Williams and these other guys. Like they look visibly hurt that, <laughs> that LeBron is not their friend anymore. Same thing with Jr. But J.R. is very fortunate because he, he should have just looked at the positive. LeBron James got him a major contract. If it was not for LeBron, I doubt if J.R. Smith would be in the NBA today. Of them at the New York Knicks. But he, he was, was sixth man of the year. Right. He was, and he was uh, an athletic marvel in addition to everything else. So that's not there the same way anymore, obviously. He's not that good anymore. And, but, so, so like that's what we're thinking about. But it will not stay with him the way the Weber moment stayed with Weber. Because the fact is, they weren't the best team, they had no shot to win, it didn't cost them the championship. And also, he's just not that great a player. Chris Webber was viewed as being the best player in college basketball in 1993. That's why he was drafted number one overall. So fortunately for him, you know, he's been able to, he's been able to have such a great career in the aftermath of that event. Not just on the basketball floor, but also as an announcer that you know he can talk about the situation and it not be too traumatic for him you have other great athletes in the history of professional sports like jackie smith the tight end of the dallas cowboys who dropped the football in uh super bowl i think 13 against the pittsburgh steelers he played for the dallas cowboys you also have bill buckner who let the ball go through his legs i mean this is a guy bill buckner who had almost 3,000 hits in his career and he's known for the ball going through his legs so, I mean, these type of things, they happen in the history of sports. J.R. Smith is never going to be mentioned amongst those guys because he's just not that good a player. Plus, it was a seven-game series. It was game one. It wasn't like it was game six or game seven. And no one believes that it did. Let me say this. I don't mind J.R. Smith on my team. First of all, let me tell you something right now. JR you go ahead and bring him onto your team. I said, I said this before. I would love to see Stephen A. Smith become a general manager for a, for a team. You know who we need? We need J.R. Smith. Let's bring him on. Let's give him the max. Can we give him the max? Let's give him 45 mil a year. <laughs> they say, Steve, pack up your shit, get the fuck out of here. J.R. is not a bad guy at all. One of the nicest guys, regardless. And listen, he's really, he really is one of the nicest guys. He gets streaky, he gets hot, yeah. he, can, he can make some things Quite happen. Hot, boy, yeah. He can defend as a perimeter defender. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm pointing to, is the indelible memory that won't escape people. You're talking about what... Bro, nobody's gonna remember that shit. Nobody cares that J.R. Smith didn't call a timeout or threw the ball away. Nobody cares. It was a sweep, dude. Like, Stephen A. Smith is trying to make this into a Havlicek stole the ball type of moment. Like, that was like in Game 7, I think, that that happened. With, with three seconds left, that Havlicek stole the ball. This was a sweep. Nobody cares. What it should be. I'm talking about what it is. People, when you bring up J.R. Smith, that's going to come to their mind. The most famous moment of his career. Right? Yes. 
Right, yeah. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things turn out for Mr. Just Retarded Smith, a.k.a. J.R. Smith. He truly is blessed. You know, as they say, the most high looks out for fools. <laughs> so peace.